Howdy folks and welcome to Smoogleville. And in this episode, we're actually gonna be working down in the basement, not in the workshop. And the reason for that is I've actually been doing some tracking of the radon levels down here over the last year or so. I recently purchased this meter, in fact, to really give us a real time view of what those levels are. And they've really been way too high, well above the EPA's safe numbers. And we've been up into the eight eight and a half pika curries per liter kind of numbers, which is something that really does need to be dealt with when you're seeing those kind of, kind of high levels. It's a quite dangerous gas and we do need to get it out of here. So I'm gonna be showing you how we went about installing a radon mitigation system in this very basement. And uh, at the end, I will be revealing the, the numbers and show you just how effective after a few days that radon medication system actually was so without further ado let's cut to the equipment that we need to actually get this project started the u.s environmental protection agency and the surgeon general strongly recommend taking further action when the home's radon test results are four picocuries per liter or greater even homes with very high levels can be reduced below four picocuries per liter the epa recommends that you use an nrpp nrsb or state approved contractor to correct any radon problems so this is the equipment I'm going to be using for this project. I thought I'd show you up front some of the things you're going to need to get before you attempt this project. First of all, the, the sort of the center point of this whole project is this, this pump here. This is made by some bloke called Ray Donaway. And this is the RP145 model, uh, which for this size of basement should produce enough vacuum under the slab to draw out the, the dangerous gases and push them harmlessly into the atmosphere. Another special item I got was this guy here. This is a meter, a gauge that you plug, you attach to the pump, uh, to the pipe below the pump. And when, when there's a vacuum drawing on one side of it, this little tube goes in there. And so you can keep an eye on this to make sure that these two aren't level, because if they drop level, it means you've lost your vacuum and it's not doing anything. So either the pump's failed or there's some other issue, but you need to get yourself one of these little, one of these little gauges. They weren't expensive, about, hmm, don't know, about 15, 20 bucks, something like that, nothing, nothing crazy, but uh, they come in red and blue. So whichever color you want. Another couple of special tools I've got here. This is an SDS drill very good for cutting through concrete you can always tell that it's sds because it has a kind of a bayonet sds fitting that just snaps in if you don't have one of these i suggest you rent one because the biggest the hardest part of this job is that you're going to be going through concrete all right so you want to get get that snapped in there there we go that's a, a 5 8 drill bit and uh, this also has a hammer position on it as well so it doesn't rotate it vibrates and then you can use a chisel so we're gonna bore a series of holes to get the pipe to go through the slab and then I'm going to use this chisel uh, I've got a long piloting dr drill pit bit here for piloting the hole as it comes out of the basement and goes outside and I've got a nice powerful hand drill there uh, for you know drilling using a hole saw to cut through the, the baseboards on the on the house to actually get the pipe in. I've also got some backer rod here. You'll need that to help you seal around where the pipe comes out of the concrete, which then is sealed with some of this stuff. We've got some, uh, basically some cement sealer here. So I'm thinking that should be a, a pretty robust way of sealing the pipe in. And of course, I would wear some knee pads as well because I'm gonna be crawling around on the floor. Let's get started on the job now. I'm gonna take you down into the basement and we, we've already cleared the area where we're going to start work. And I'm gonna to attempt to make a hole in the concrete, clear some gravel out from underneath or sand, I don't know what's there yet, and take it from there. Right there, I'm using a permanent marker rather than pencil because I'll just brush it off otherwise. All right, this could be about, uh, hmm, Three and a half inches of concrete, maybe four, let's see. There we go, just cut through. All right. Uh oh. I wasn't expecting that. Ah. Ah. Yeah. Feels 
fuck, I've got gravel under there. I hope so. Gravel's gravel's way better for this because uh, it's you know more porous than sand. So when you create a vacuum, it's going to travel further through the slab and pull more gas. So I'm hoping for gravel. This house is was built in '88, so it's about about 33, 34 years old now. So uh, not sure what we're going to find. All right, I'm gonna go get a shop vac so I can get rid of some of this dust. did find that using the auger bit in combination with a shop vac was a great way of really removing a lot of dirt very quickly from the hole. Okay, so we've got about, we got about one five gallon bucket out of this hole. We're gonna do another and there's probably a bunch half a bucket in the vacuum cleaner. So let's carry on. This is the longest part of the job is digging this hole out. Right. The next job was to drill a pilot hole through the header joist in the basement so it would pop out on the outside and I'd be able to see where I needed to drill with my hole saw. I left the drill bit in the hole so I could find it more easily outside. Next, I drilled a hole using the 4.5 inch hole saw. 4 inch Schedule 40 pipe has a 4.5 inch outside diameter, so this should make for a nice tight fit. Not too tight, I hope. <sighs> yeah. Alright, let's see if this is going to fit. Oh, sweet! Back inside now and it's time to get the pipe set. I'm using purple PVC primer to clean and properly prepare for the fittings. Then I'm using a generous application of fresh PVC pipe dope. Always use fresh glue as it doesn't have a good shelf life once you've opened it. Having put glue on both the pipe and the fitting, I'll push them together and then hold them for a few seconds while they start to set up. All right, it's two length. So now I've got to drill holes in it. All right, where's my depth? There, so from here on up, and I've seen different ideas, but that's about the thickness of the concrete. So I'm gonna drill some, I'm gonna use a hole saw to drill some big holes in this. So, and now I've seen people like cut angles in it so it doesn't suck dirt up. You just don't want this, all the suction being right there when it's sitting on the ground. So we need to open this up. So you can do it how you want. You can cut an angle or I'll do what I'm going to do, which is drill a bunch of holes in there. So that will sit on the ground, but it won't suck dirt up because of all the holes I've drilled around the side. That'll let more air in than the bottom, so it won't be pulling on that. So that's pretty safe now. And that should be a good height for our for setting that pump, so we'll get that on next. Okay. Next, I push some backer rod into the gap between the pipe and the concrete. This helps support the caulking and means I can use less of it and get a really good seal. Once I've pushed that in place, I can get busy with the caulking gun. I also fill some gaps between the wall and the floor to help improve my vacuum below the slab area. We want to make sure that we don't have too many leaks. 
And to finish up the basement work, I fit the gauge below the pump, which requires two screws and a 3 16 hole for the gauge tubing. So we've got the meter on there, the gauge is set, ready to go. I'm going to plug it in and see what happens. Oh, let's put it on this side. There we go. Oh, how about that? I hear it running. We have vacuum, so it's that means it's getting resistance. The higher that goes, the more more vacuum you got. So, uh, so it's definitely um, creating negative pressure under the concrete. You can hear it, but it's not very loud. I, don't know, I doubt we'll hear that upstairs, will we? So, yeah. Yeah. That. All right, so day two. And uh, I'm going to mark this and cut it, and we're going to go up. <clears throat> Next, I had to come up with a quick and simple bracket to hold the pipe at the top near the eaves. The store seemed happy to sell me 4 inch pipe, but seemed to have forgotten to stock any brackets for that diameter. No biggie, I'll just knock something up in the shop real fast. Okay, so that's that. That fits nicely, that should... Have I got it the right way? Yes, I have. Right, so let's glue this bit up. Right, okay. So let's go and make the little cowl and then we'll fit that hopefully before it gets dark. <laughs> All right, let's see if this, if not, I'll buy one, but this might buy us some time at least. Okay. Let's see. All right, that seems to have set up and it's gluing quite nicely. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna dry fit that up there for now, just in case we decide to go a little higher up. But for the moment, I'm just going to drop this in there and I should keep the rain out and some critters out. There it is. Okay, folks, it's five days since we commissioned this system. It was, as you saw before, readings were around about six Pico Curries around about the time I commissioned this thing. And they have been dropping every day. So now it's the big reveal, folks. Let's see what number we're going to have now for our radon levels in this basement. Drum roll, please. And the meter is reading a very interesting number. This top number here, that's the long-term average. So in all the weeks I've had this running, that's the average. That number has been falling steadily since I commissioned the machine. The bottom number is two different numbers. It's giving a seven day average and then a one day average. And it, it oscillates between the two. So the seven day average is 4.08 pico curries. And the current reading, the, the one day is 0 0.18 pico curries. 0 0.18, that is the lowest I've seen it yet. So there you go, folks. That is absolutely amazing. Way beyond my expectations. I think we can put that one in the success column, don't you? Please click the like button if you found this video helpful. And we'd love to have you as a subscriber, as there's always something interesting going on in Smoogleville. Yeah.